So what is up guys, it's Smotown here, and today my video is a little different than my usual long form lore content. I'm simply wanting to discuss and address a lore debate that I'm seeing crop up more and more, including in my own community posts and on Twitter. And as you've probably gathered from the title and thumbnail of this video, the debate surrounds the slide in the introductory cinematic to the game that shows Margit and Radan fighting each other, and whether or not this is actually Margit and Radan fighting each other, and whether Margit beat him in combat. In any case, it gives me a good opportunity to discuss some lore theories surrounding the early part of the Shattering that normally probably wouldn't fit within my more evidence-based lore videos. So for those who aren't aware, this debate arises from a single slide shown in the opening cinematic. This slide is one of few slides that attempt to illustrate the Shattering for the player as we are introduced to the concept for the first time. Soon. Maricus offspring, demigods all, claimed the shards of the Elden Ring. And in this particular slide, it looks to show Margit, Morgoth's alter ego, in combat with Radan, and it seems that Margit, in this exact moment, has the upper hand in this fight. The common points of contention that arise from it, as far as I can see, within various Twitter posts and community posts, is that 1. Some people believe that this cannot be Redan in this slide because he is too small. And secondly, there are those that accept that it's Redan, but go as far as saying that it shows that Margit has beaten Redan in the past in a fight. And in fact, cite this as an actual fact. Good examples of this discussion that I can remember, because to be honest I've seen it in quite a few situations, is the discussion started by Silvermon on his Twitter, and the one started by Raditascore on his Twitter, and I'll leave a link for both of those discussions below. I believe the truth lies between these two opposing ideas, that we can't possibly know if Margit actually beat Redan in combat, but that it is most assuredly Redan depicted in this slide. So let's start by analysing point one, which is it can't be Redan because he is too small in this image. So the whole point of these slides are to introduce the Shattering, Specifically, the narrator's talking about the fact that the demigods are warring between themselves. So the point of the slide is to illustrate demigods fighting. So why would it show Margit fighting someone who's not Redan, i.e. I've seen it suggested it's a Leone misbegotten or a warrior of Redan. I think that the point of the slide is to show the demigods actually locked in combat, so it makes sense that Margit and Redan would be used as an illustration of this fact. So generally people have no issue accepting that this is Margit or more goat, given his visual indicators, i.e. his omen features and his signature staff and cape. Yet for some reason the same logic isn't applied to the other figure, who has the visual indicators of Radan minus his size, i.e. this character is adorned in Radan's signature armour, his standout plume and gauntlets. No one else has this armour in the game, it is only Radan. Yet, as I've said, the main issue that people have with this is Redan's size, so even despite the fact the visual indicators suggest it is clearly Redan, when we see him in-game he is obviously so much bigger than he is in this slide, with certain lore points suggesting he may even be related to the giants via Radigan. And for some people it's compounded the fact that we then see him soon after in another slide with Melania back to his usual colossal size. But the thing that you need to consider when looking at these introductory slides is that they are artistic impressions of events. So even lore-wise, if we take it that this painting is created in-game, i.e. it was done by an artist of the Lands Between, size still does not really matter. Artists may not have witnessed the events or characters themselves, and people remember events and relay them differently, and so by the time the artist actually goes to put brush to paper, the events may be very skewed in his mind, or the way that they remember it may be very different. And sometimes artists just change things because it fits the size and layout of the painting better, so you can't really take a size to be a proper scale of the person that they're painting all the time. All of the slides are thematic and artistic recreations. They are not photographs, they are not cinematics, they are not gameplay. To the new player, they are simply meant to give a general impression of the events of the Shattering so they have some background ideas in their mind before going into the game. The point of the slide therefore is thematic rather than factual. Bear in mind that Margit, while obviously not as big as Redan, is also bigger in the game, 
If you look at his size compared to the soldiers in this slide as well, you can see his size is far off from what he is in the game. So I don't know why this logic's been applied to Radan and not Margit. So do not get hung up on the size, this is merely an artistic bit of art recreating an event. And you shouldn't put too much stock into the size of the characters, as annoying as that may be in a game like Souls where everything matters. Now let's move on to the second point raised by this slide, where people have seen this slide and definitively believe that having looked at it, we can say that Margit has beaten Redan. I've seen this idea repeated a few times in Reddit and on Twitter that people just straight up say Margit beat Redan. As I will discuss in the final part of this video, while I do believe that Margit most likely repelled Redan's forces from the capital, I think it's a leap to conclude that from this slide he absolutely beat Redan in a one-on-one -on -one contest. It does not show Margit defeating Redan, it merely shows a single freeze frame of a fight where Margit does appear to have the upper hand. Redan is far from defeated, he's still active and tightly gripping Margit's staff. How do we know in the moments after this that Redan doesn't simply reverse his position or uses Margit's momentum against him and throws him off? We don't, that's the point, we don't know anything of this fight, only that they had a scuffle and came into contact with each other during a battle. We don't know how it ends. It shows two demigods fighting. It is an introductory thematic slide to the conflict of the Shattering, and it gives an impression of two mighty beings being locked in combat to give the player that understanding, that thematic introduction going into the game so they understand it as mighty beings clashing with one another. That is all. And I think the argument against both is the same despite them being pretty diametrically opposed points. It's just a bit of thematic art, recreating events fleetingly to give the player an impression going into the game. All we can say is that Margit and Redan clashed, but we cannot determine the outcome of their actual fight. Regardless, it does raise interesting questions. Why and where did they clash? So let's move away from the debate and discuss some early shattering lore now, some lore theories. Just as a warning, while I do cite bits of lore from in-game, as well as some cut content, a lot of it's my speculation and logical conclusions built from that evidence. But with that disclaimer out of the way, let us proceed. One of the most interesting bits of unanswered lore in the game, in my opinion, is something we can find on a sword monument on Altus Plateau. The sword monument in question being the one found near the Altus Highway site of Grace, and it reads as follows. The first defence of Dale, a sovereign alliance rots from within. Traces yet remain of a bloody conspiracy. So this Sovereign Alliance has always intrigued me as soon as I first read this sword monument. What is it? When did it exist? And who comprised it? At the onset of the more goat boss fight, he comes out and essentially starts berating the shard bearers, and interestingly he does it while gesticulating towards a throne that seems to have belonged to each name at one point or the other. Ah, Godric the Golden. The twin prodigies, Mikola and Melania. General Radan. Praetor Reichardt. Luna Princess Rani. Willful traitors. All. To my mind, and in my opinion, this is the Sovereign Alliance. Why else are these thrones here? To me it looks like some kind of council setup. The first defence of Leyendale Sword Monument suggests that this alliance then fell apart from the inside, though the references to a conspiracy of blood and rotting from within are possible allusions that are left for the player to consider. I speculate that Morgoat led some kind of loose coalition of the demigods post-shattering to maintain order. Yet this clearly did not last and violence broke out between Alliance members. And this would explain the bitterness with which Morgoat describes them all as. There is also a second assault on Leyendale, as another sword monument reads, The second defence of Leyendale, the fell omen, stacks high the corpses of heroes. Yet the Erd Tree remains unshaken. Now I am going to take some liberties here in speculating the chain of events by including some cut content regarding Morgoat. I have the lore hunter to thank for this content as he has compiled a document with all the dialogue in the game, including cut content, and he shared this with me, 
so props to the lore hunter and I highly recommend you check out his channel, especially his superb video on the lore of the nomadic merchants. Anyway, the cut content I'm referring to is an NPC called Viscount Shanehite, who is essentially a noble of the Erdtree capital who is loyal to the Veiled Monarch without realising that Morgo is in fact an omen, as Viscount Shanehite is someone who actually hates omens with a passion. This would explain the Veiled Monarch, but it's not really the point of this video, and in fact I would refer you to Ratataskor's quality video on this particular subject as to why Margit introduces himself as Margit instead of Morgoat, and I'll link the video below in the description. My focus is instead on the conflicts that Viscount Shanehite would have described to us, as he would have said the following. The shattering caused a great many fools to overstep their bounds. Their impudence led to insurgency against Morgoat, Lord of Grace. They raised an army and sought to lay siege to this sacred ground. But do you see where it got them? King Morgoat's rule would not be shaken. Their attempt to defile the capital failed. And while we reveled in eternal grace, the traitors were eyed by the grotesque fell omen, and their corpses piled high outside the war. So this just adds a lot more detail to what we already know from the environmental storytelling of the battlegrounds around Leyendel, as well as what was told to us through the sword monuments. We know from the second Defence of Leyendel sword monument description that Margit himself was unleashed upon the battlefield and reaped a bloody toll upon the attackers, laying high the corpses of the traitors outside the walls of Leyendel. And it was no doubt during this defence that Margit the Fell Omen gained not only his moniker but his sinister reputation. And I cannot help but feel that this second defence of Leyendel where Margit took to the field is in fact what we are witnessing within the slide that we have been discussing in this video. The second battle of Leyendel is obviously where Margit gained his infamy. It's fair to assume that Morgoat and therefore Margit took a defensive posture during the war given that his main concern was with guarding the Erdtree and the Elden Ring. My speculation is that aside from a few champions that he most likely hunted down, as described by the Fell Omen Cloak and kind of what he does to us in the first boss battle of the game, I doubt he took place in many major battles, aside from the defences of Leyendel. Morgoat makes it very clear that he wants no part in the scrabbling for power, all he is concerned with is extinguishing the flames of ambition within those who would claim the Elden Ring. In my mind, this then narrows down the slide that we're discussing down to one of two battles, the first defence of Leyendel or the second, and to me it is most likely the second. Viscount Shanehite's dialogue and the sword monument that refers to the second defence of Leyendel use exactly the same language when they're talking about corpses being piled high by the fell omen, and so it is most likely that this is the one that Margit took the most active role in. I imagine Redan to be one of the traitors or rebels described in the cut content by Viscount Shanehight that turned against Morgoat and then assaulted the capital, and I see this, just speculation of course, as the second defence of Leyendel. In the second defence of Leyendel, Margit would take to the field and decimate the attacking forces, and most likely coming into contact with Redan as a result. Viscount Shanehight's dialogue doesn't make it clear who comprised these rebels, but I most likely believe that Redan, given what we see in the slide, took part in the second defence of Leyendel on the attacker's side. And given that Morgoat still controls Leyendel and Margit's reputation in this battle, it is fair to assume that Margit's intervention turned the tide. So yes, I do believe that Morgoat defeated Redan, but only in regards to one general versus another, as it is clear Morgoat successfully defended Leyendel against all aggressors in the Shattering, as he is still in control of it. Evidently though, both walked away from this conflict, and aside from alluding to the fact that these two did come into contact with each other, we cannot determine who won the one-on-one -on -one battle that is shown here. But I think with all the evidence that we've discussed, it does make it clear that Margit and Redan fought each other during the second defence of Leyendel. But that is all the slide is meant to do. It is meant to evoke your imagination, and this is what I imagine, given a combination of in-game and cut content lore, that this is what this slide is meant to represent. I believe it is meant to represent Margit fighting Redan during the second defence of Leyendel after their alliance that they were both a part of fell apart during the first defence, which is of course another event 
that we should discuss in another video. And I hope that these slides do the same for you, I hope they evoke your imagination. That is the great thing about these stills rather than the cinematics used in other Souls games. We get to fill in the gaps. What is this freeze frame between Margit and Radan? What conflict was it a part of? And the same for the other slides that we find within the introductory segment. And that is the point. It is meant to get you to imagine what happened, to get a greater picture of the shattering as a whole, rather than tell a precise narrative. So thanks guys, that is my take on the current debate surrounding the Margit Redan conflict. I hope you enjoyed this. I usually do long form evidence based lore videos, so this was a bit refreshing just to speculate and discuss a bit of lore that's been going around during the community at this point. If you do want to support the channel, please give me a like and a subscribe as I do cover Elden Ring lore content almost primarily at the moment. If you want to support the channel in another way, I have just launched memberships which uh, give a number of benefits such as badges as well as emotes and some member only posts. Aside from that guys, I will have my next long form lore video up next weekend. But apart from that guys, I hope you have a nice evening and I will see you on the battlefields of Leandale. Take care.